a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the learning of the learned I will set aside. Where is the wise one? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made the wisdom of the world foolish? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not come to know God through wisdom, it was the will of God through the foolishness of the proclamation to save those who have faith. For Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Dominus vobiscum. Lectio Sancti Evangelii secundum Mateum. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay each one according to his conduct. Verbum Domini. Normally in the Universal Church, Today's memorial of St. Paul the Cross was celebrated yesterday on October the 19th, but because of the significance of the North American martyrs, St. Isaac's Job, Jogues, St. John de Brebeuf, and companions, St. Paul the Cross is always nixed, not really nixed, but moved the next day to October 
the 20th here in the United States. So we want to honor him. St. Paul the Cross is the founder of the congregation of Discalce Clerks of the Holy Cross and Passion of Our Lord, more commonly known as the Passionist. His first biographer, a saint as well, St. Vincent Strombi, stated that the Holy Spirit raised up Paul the Cross to help people find God in their heart. Paul was convinced that God is most easily found by us in the passion and death of Jesus Christ. He saw the passion as being the most overwhelming sign of God's love for us, and at the same time, our best means for union with him. Throughout preaching missions, he would always carry a large crucifix in honor of the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where he became known as Paul of the Cross. I couldn't help but remember Father Pablo Straub, who stood at this pulpit many times with that large crucifix. And he would often have it laying over there on the altar. And whenever he would start talking about the cross, we would see us as servers there, as a brother. I would see him start to make the move toward the cross. And then the cameramen would start to get a little bit nervous. And he would grab the cross and start preaching with Christ crucified. There's something about preaching Christ crucified. I wish I had a cross in my hands now. That transcends time, transcends time and space because we're preaching eternal truths, the suffering and death, the passion of our Lord and Savior. And there is nothing more that defines us, no sign that defines us more than the cross, and I would dare say even the crucifix, not just the cross. But we begin every prayer with the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, very deliberately, not, but very deliberately in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to make that sign of the cross. For those of us who pray the liturgy of the hours, we open our day by tracing the sign of the cross on our lips. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. So crossing our lips with the sign of the cross. As we walk into the church, we dip our right hand in holy water and cross ourselves, reminding us of our own baptism. We sign our forehead and our lips and our heart with the cross at the proclamation of the gospel, which we just did. May the Lord be on our minds and on our lips and on our hearts. I didn't know that until I got to seminary. I didn't know what I was doing when I was a kid doing this. I was just doing something like this, but just doing something very simple. May the Lord be on our hearts, minds, heart, lips, and heart. <laughs> Seven o'clock in the morning here in Birmingham. There are many other times of the day that we make the sign of the cross. The cross of Christ has always been and always will be the sign of contradiction in the world. Only a Christian can gaze upon the cross and see victory. Without faith, the cross is a mere instrument of torture. Without faith, a person may look at the cross and see that that man on the cross was defeated. Without faith. With faith, we see that that man has not been defeated. But that man is the victor. 
Faith enables us to look at that cross and believe that the cross is never the final chapter of the book. But really, it opens for us the way for eternal glory. St. John Paul II said in his letter on the Christian meaning of human suffering, he says, quote, Precisely by means of his cross, he must strike at the roots of evil planted in the history of man and in human souls. Precisely by means of his cross, he must accomplish the work of salvation. He meaning Jesus. By his cross, he accomplishes salvation in every human soul, in every human heart. Life with Christ does not end with the cross. As I said, it's not the final chapter of the book. Eternal life with God in heaven should be on our minds and in our hearts whenever we gaze upon the cross, whenever we gaze upon and remember the passion and death of the Lord and what he went through for our salvation. That's not the final chapter we remember that we enter into the cross with him and God willing, we shall be with him in eternal glory. We remember that this life is not the final chapter as well. The life that we experience here on this earth, the suffering that we experience on this earth, Eternal life with God in heaven is what we are aimed at. That's what we are all about as Christians. The two beams of Christ's cross, both the vertical beam and the horizontal beam, we can say are where heaven and earth meet, where God and man meet on the cross. The crossroads of mankind, we can say. Where each one of us meet God on the cross. It is only on the cross that each of us as his disciples, Christ's disciples, will find purpose and meaning in our lives. Purpose and meaning in our own personal sufferings. Person, purpose and meaning in the pain that we experience in life, whatever that may be. Venerable Fulton J. Sheen once said that there are two kinds of people in this world. Those who look up at the cross and shake their fist at it, and those people who are on the cross with Christ. I thought that was a profound statement. There are two people, kinds of people in this world. Hopefully we're not one of them, but sometimes we fall into this. We may. There are those who look up at the cross and shake their fist at the cross of Christ, basically say, how dare you? How dare you? And those who look up at the cross of Christ and are united with him in faith, hope, and charity. Those who look up at the Christ and can find meaning and purpose and value in their life. They look at the cross and they see themselves. A modern Christian writer states, before we can begin to see the cross as something done for us, we have to see it as something done by us. Before we can begin to see the cross as something done 
for us, that is, for our salvation, that he accomplished that for our salvation, we need to begin to see the cross as something done by us. That we, by our sins, contributed to the passion and death of a Lord. At the same time, every Christian, every human heart, was in the heart of Christ as he, as he was being crucified. This is something that the fathers of the church and many other theologians and spiritual writers have written about inexhaustibly. That during his passion, at every moment of his passion, each one of us was in the heart of Christ. That Jesus was thinking about us during his passion, when he was being scourged, when he was being crowned with thorns, when he was being nailed on the cross, when he was suffering on the cross for three hours. You and I were in the mind of Christ. He was thinking about us. We were in his heart. John Paul II would state something very beautiful in an encyclical that he wrote on the Holy Spirit. He said that, and I'm paraphrasing, he says that the Holy Spirit descended upon the heart of Christ and ignited within his heart a holocaust when he was on the cross. That the Holy Spirit comes and ignites within the heart of Christ and it ignites within his heart the offering, the perfect offering that he would give to his eternal Father. And who was in the heart of Christ on the cross? You. Each one of you, every single last human being that would ever be saved or will be saved is saved by the passion and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice of Calvary reaches through every age and transcends every race and culture. Can we see ourselves on the cross of Christ? It's a good question. Can we see ourselves up there with Jesus? Father Angelus used to say that each one of our autobiographies is written on the cross. He would say that the parchment was his body and his precious blood was the ink. Each one of our autobiographies can be written, stated, on the cross of Christ. Preaching Christ crucified still has the power as it did in the early days of the church of St. Paul. It has not lost its power and its effectiveness. St. Anthony of Padua writes, Christ who is your life is hanging before you so that you may look at the cross as in a mirror. He gives that image of the cross as a mirror. We should be able to see ourselves. Further, he states, there you will be able to know how mortal your wounds are, that no medicine other than the blood of the Son of God could heal. He says, if you look closely, you will be able to realize how great your human dignity and your value are. That we find our value and our human dignity in the cross of Christ, in his blood. He says nowhere other than looking at himself in the mirror of the cross can man better understand how much he is worth. End quote. Your worth is rooted on the cross. 
and what Christ accomplished for you. At one point in our lives, for all of us, suffering will come upon us sooner or later. And that suffering is still the most common denominator in everybody's life. Something that will unite and does unite all of us in every time, in every place, in every culture, in every place in our world. We cannot hide from it. Sometime in our life, we will in some way or another encounter the suffering of Christ. Whether, in our, it, whether it, it, if it's in our own personal suffering or maybe in the suffering of another person that we're next to, that we're helping to bear their cross. St. Paul the Cross states, I wish that all men could understand the great favor that God grants them when in his goodness he sends them suffering and especially suffering devoid of all consolation. For then the soul, like gold, is purified in the fiery crucible, is cleansed, made beautiful, detached from earthly things, and united to the sovereign good without even being conscious of it. He also states, speaking of suffering, what an honor God confers on us when he calls us to travel the same road as his divine son. And what is that road? The royal road of the cross. Suffering, that road that leads, again, the vertical beams and the horizontal beams that each one of us meet at the cross. That's where we meet our God and Lord. And if any of us want to know just how precious we are, just how much we are valued, just just how much we are worth, all we need to do is take one good hard look at a crucifix. It says it all. 